Okay, this is Professor Langston back at you with an anatomical model of the skin. Now remember the skin is an organ, it is not a tissue. That is, it's made up of lots of different tissues including epithelial tissue, connective tissue, nervous tissue, and muscle tissue. So the skin has three major regions. We have the epidermis, which is composed of epithelial tissue. We have the dermis, which is composed of dense irregular fibrous connective tissue down here, and also areolar tissue up there. And so the dermis is divided into a reticular dermis, which is down here, and up into a papillary dermis, which are these little bumps. These are the papilla. Okay, the third and final layer of skin that's not technically part of skin, but of course we all consider it part of skin, is the hypodermis. Hypodermis or subcutaneous layer consists mainly of adipose tissue, or some areolar tissue, etc. Now, the dermis and the hypodermis are very vascular. That means they have lots of blood vessels, which you can see in there, and they repair themselves fairly easily. The epidermis, remember, is avascular. There's no blood vessels going beyond the basement membrane, and so all the nutrients have to diffuse up to get to those layers of cells. So let's start and talk about the epidermis. Now, depending on where we are in the body, the epidermis will have somewhere between three and five layers. Okay, this is in hairy skin, which is thin skin. We have an outer stratum corneum. Uh, somewhere in there we'll have a, a stratum uh, granulosum a stratum spinosum in there where we have the spiny uh, area where we have these spinous like cells and then on the bottom the stratum basale. The stratum basale is the area where new cells are made. Lots and lots of cell division in there. So again, basale, spinosum, uh, probably granulosum, and up here would be corneum. The important part to realize is that things in the granulosum are dying whereas the stuff up here in the corneum, they're dead. Uh, there's no living cells up there. Uh, if we were to look into uh, thick skin, like in the foot, we'd have another layer in there called the stratum lucidum, and that would also be a dead layer of compacted cells. Okay, so let's take a look at the other structures we have here. We already pointed out the dermal papilla, and these sort of interdigitate with the uh, areas, uh, the layers of the epidermis in sort of a tongue and groove, and that holds things together. You can see we have blood vessels coming up here very close uh, to the epidermis uh, within the papilla, and that's where the nutrients are diffusing from to get into of the epidermal tissue. Now, what are the other structures we have in here? Again, a lot of dense, irregular fibrous connective tissue. And then here we have a hair follicle, okay? Hair follicles are surrounded by epithelial tissue. And then this thing right here is a sebaceous gland. A sebaceous gland is an exocrine gland, which is gonna exude sebum or oil uh, through that hair shaft uh, onto the surface of the skin. We also have this thing right here, which is called a um, erector pili muscle. The rector pili is made up of smooth muscle, and that's what contracts and makes the hair stand up on end uh, when you're cold or afraid or excited or something like that. Okay, another structure that we have in here is this sort of ball of yarn looking thing, and this is gonna be an eccrine sweat gland. So that's how we cool our bodies, right? We produce sweat in these glands, and it comes to the, uh, the surface of the skin, and then it evaporates and cools the body, okay? Over here we have just a cross section uh, through that sebaceous gland, you can see in there, so lots of cell division in there, and we can see the different parts of the hair follicle, uh, et cetera. Now, as far as sensory structures you want to take a look at, uh, down here we have something called a lamellated corpuscle, also called a Pacinian corpuscle, which is important for deep touch uh, and, and deep touch and pressure, uh, and that's way down in the hypodermis. And up here in the papillary dermis, you can see we have another uh, corpuscle, and this is probably going to be a Meisner's corpuscle, and that's good for very uh, shallow, fine touch, and you can read about that in your textbook and your lab manual. Of course, we have lots of blood vessels everywhere throughout the dermis and hypodermis, but again, no blood vessels here in the epidermis because that is a vascular tissue. Now let's go look at, at another model. Okay, this is a slightly different, slightly newer uh, mo model of skin. And what we can see again is the layers. We have the epidermis, uh, the papillary dermis, we have the reticular dermis, and finally the hypodermis. So let's take a look at the structures here. Starting with the epidermis, right, we have uh, our stratum corneum. Uh, below that, maybe, well, we've got a stratum granulosum in there. Probably shouldn't be a stratum, uh, a stratum lucidum here since it's thin skin, but looks like there might be one. This purple layer here would be our stratum spinosum. You know, those are nice happy cells, they're living cells. Uh, and then down below that we have our stratum basale. Stratum basale, again, is where all the epithelial cells are created through cell division. 
Once again, down here, we have these bumps that are called our dermal papilla. They're made up primarily of areolar connective tissue. You can see lots of blood vessels in there. You can also see our tactile corpuscles, probably our Meissner's corpuscles in here. Um, elsewhere in the skin, what do we see down here in the dermis? Okay, we've got our hair uh, shaft and follicle again. We've got our sebaceous gland. And we also have our erector pili muscle, which is like here and here. And remember, those are the ones that are made of a smooth muscle and help that hair to stand up on end. Now, down here in the hypodermis or subcutaneous layer, you see we have lots of adipose tissue, right? Lots of fat. There'd be areolar tissue there as well. And then we have these bacinian corpuscles, again, which help us with deep touch or firm pressure. Okay. Other structures we can see on this model that we didn't see in the last model is we can actually see these right here, and these are what I think to be free nerve endings. And so free nerve endings are important in detecting things like uh, temperature, uh, pain and tickle and itch and things like that. So even though the epidermis is very avascular, it does have a good uh, nerve supply. So even if you get a minor paper cut right there, particularly in a fingertip, it can be very, uh, very, very painful. So again, all the models are a little bit different, but they're very similar. Uh, they have the similar components, epidermis, uh, dermis, and then hypodermis, and of course, all the different structures they're in. Uh, last thing I want to point out, this again was just our Eckerin sweat gland, okay, and that produces uh, sort of sweat, which is made up of water and electrolytes, and that moves onto the body surface and cools us uh, as that sweat evaporates.